Iteration is one of the most important aspects of programming. In order to come to a general conclusion on multiple number of things, we need to be able to iterate on each of those elements. For loops are useful for this purpose. Today we are going to talk about loops in Python, especially the for loops. Now this tutorial has a lot of important aspects related to for loops. However, if you are only interested in one particular aspect, go down to the description where you will find the timestamp for each of those particular topics. You can pick and choose. If else conditions are great for making decision about a single element. But what if we have multiple elements to compare? In that case, we need to iterate over all the elements present in the sequence. For loops in Python satisfy this purpose. For loop can step through the items in an ordered sequence to make decisions on each one of them. It works on all kinds of iterable like list, strings, tuples and dictionaries. For example, if we have a string called python and we say for letter in string print letter, python will return us all the letters in an ordered sequence. Now the variable letter declared in the for loop just works inside the scope of the loop. If you try to use that variable outside of the loop, python will not return you anything. Also remember, the variable letter is just a variable that I chose. It can be anything that you want. During our practice session, we are also going to look at two simple one word statements called continue and break. And we are going to use the famous problem of finding Nemo to understand the whole thing. So guys, let's go ahead and practice some for loop for Python. So guys, let's go ahead and solve the problem of finding Nemo. So here you can see I have a variable called fish names and I've assigned a list to it. Now this list contains the name of all the fish that were there in the movie Finding Nemo. Marlin, uh, Dory, Nemo, Bloat, Bubbles. So there are basically five names here. Now our objective is that we have to find Nemo among all the names, right? So here I can write a basic for loop stating for fish in fish underscore names print fish let's run this code now so python will go through each one of those names in that list and return us in an ordered sequence so you'll see marlin was first in the list we get marlin first bubbles was last in the list we get bubbles last right so it always works in an ordered sequence but you know what? I'm not happy with this. Our objective is to find Nemo, not everyone else. So what I can do is inside the for loop, I can put an if else clause. So I can say if fish equal to Nemo print I found Nemo. Yay. Else print he is not Nemo. Well, he is to, let's not say he, it's not Nemo. It's percentage S and then uh, you already know uh, how this works. So I can say uh, fish. So I can put a percentage here and then it is going to fill, fill this up. It's called string formatting. So now if I print this, Python is going to say, it's not Nemo, it's Marlin. It's not Nemo, it's Dory. I found Nemo. And then that's just like that. So this is going to return us uh, our print statements in this order. So this is basically how a for loop works. You can basically make your decisions for multiple things without, uh, without taking one single thing into account. But you know what? I'm still not happy with this. It's like uh, I only want to print that I found Nemo. I don't want to print every time I found some other fish, right? That's where there is one statement uh, command in Python called continue comes uh, for help. So here, instead of printing, printing it's not Nemo, I just say continue. So let's see what happens. 
if I run this script now, Python just returns me I found Nemo. Now what does this continue do? Continue basically says go ahead, go back to the loop again. So you are, we are not going to do anything. We are just going to continue looping as long as our satisfaction is not met. You know, so as long as the condition is not being satisfied, we just keep looping. We don't execute any statement. In that, in that case, we use continue, right? So now you see, uh, Python is returning me. I found Nemo for the fish, uh, for the string that it found. It found Nemo on the second index and it returned I found Nemo. Let's also print the index on which we found Nemo, right? So here I can say, I found Nemo at index percentage D and now I can go here and say the index of Nemo would be fish underscore names dot the index method there is an index method that you can use with list to find the index of a particular element and within brackets we can mention the name of the element we are interested in here it's Nemo right so if I do this now this is something new that you would be learning. You didn't learn it in list. I was waiting for uh, uh, moments like this where I can give you some extra information. So if I run this, you'll see I found Nemo at index 2, right? So this is how you can use index uh, in your uh, print statements. You can find the index of the elements in a list very easily. Now, now the thing is, I, I'm still not satisfied with this. Why? Because uh, for, uh, within the for loop even after we found Nemo at index 2 there are still two more names and we are keeping looping basically the idea is once we find Nemo we should stop there and we should not look anymore there is hardly a, a chance that there is going to be yet another Nemo right here we know there is no yet uh, no no more Nemo than the one so what I can do in that case I should use the break statement right so here uh, in, in this for loop, I can say for fish in fish underscore name, if fish equal to equal to Nemo, print I found Nemo at index percentage D. Then after this, I say break. So basically what break will do is break will completely come out of the loop. So once we find Nemo, it will completely come out of the loop and the for loop will not be executed, executed anymore. So here, First, Marlin would be uh, executed. The fish should be Marlin. Uh, inside the for loop, it will go to else because it, the name is not Nemo. So uh, here we have continue. So for loop will continue again. Then it will go to Dory. It will again come inside the loop. The name is not Nemo. It will continue again. Then it will come to Nemo. The fish is equal to equal to Nemo. This statement is basically true now. Our condition holds. So then we'll print I found Nemo at index percentage D and then it will break. So basically no, no other names will be executed anymore. This way we are also improving the efficiency of our for loops. We are not processing names that we are not interested in once we already have found what we wanted, right? So if I run this and let's see how um, here I can say, uh, let's say i equal to 0. I'm just trying to show you how many loops are we running. So I say i equal to 0. Then uh, every time we run a statement, I say i plus equal to 1. Right? So here I can say, um, before break, I say i plus equal to 1. And then also in here, I say i plus equal to 1. And then I print here at the end, print the number of attempts is percentage d and then within percent i say i right so basically had we not used the break the for loop would have been executed five times right it would have looped five times because there are five strings here but now let's do this so now I found Nemo at index 2 and the number of attempts is 3. So basically the for loop was executed only 3 times. So this is the advantage of using break and also continue. So guys, now I have got an assignment for you. This is the famous FizzBuzz problem. This is actually asked in a lot of coding interview uh, challenges. Now the challenge here is print all the numbers from 1 to 100 with the following conditions. If the number is divisible by 4, print fizz. 
If the number is divisible by 8, print buzz. If the number is divisible by 12, print fizzbuzz. Else, just print the number. The expected output of the assignment would be like this. 1, 2, 3, fizz, 5, 6, 7, buzz, 9, 10, 11, fizz, buzz, and then 13, 14, 15, and it continues, right? So, go ahead, go, uh, turn on your computer, solve this problem, and let me know how you did it in the comment section below. Don't skip it because the more you practice, the more you are going to get better at programming. Also, I have put up additional questions for practicing on my GitHub account. To get more questions and to practice more, go to www.github.com slash pylenin and there you will get all the answers or all the questions uh, that you can do for for loop to improve yourself at programming. So guys, that's all for for loops tutorial. Today, we discussed a lot of facts about how we can use loops in Python. Now make sure you don't miss out on the assignments because it is the practice that is going to make you a better programmer. You can find my programming practice questions on github.com slash pylenin. More description you can find in the description link below. Thank you guys and see you in the next tutorial.